And let me give that to Anne so she can, or here I can put it in the chat too. Okay, we are live now, um, but I had to do a new thing. So let's go. Can you here. text her the link? Yeah, you want me? Uh, does that work for Ann? Is she on a mobile or she can cut and paste it real easily? I'm going to text you guys questions. What if 30,000 people download this app? Major lag action. All right, so here's the new link, and it's working. I can see it. Just texted it to you. Didn't show up. I can go in there too. Hold on. I, I see it. I don't see it. In the messaging app. Mm -hmm. In messages, I don't see it. It's not showing up. Text it to me, Dave. And I'm not using the messaging app. Uh, yeah, now, now just that photo thing. That's the deal. Okay, hold on. Tell her I'll come in and put it in there we just both texted it to you i didn't get it here tell her i'll put it i'll put it in the chat We'll see if this works. Okay, now now it is. No wait. She's got it. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Is Ted gonna post it in the chat or should I? Did you post it in the chat? Yeah, I just did because I didn't think she was getting it. So Okay. She might do it again in a second if she wants. Okay. Yeah, tweet that out. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's let's do that real quick. Switch to a new link. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, all right, we'll tweet it. So I'm Dave. I'm going to text you guys questions. Okay. okay. All right, we'll start there. What a pain in the touche. All right, let's see. Let's go here too. So we're starting a little late. It's casual here on Sunday. Oh wait, maybe I can just edit this. Let's see. Can edit post. Let's put the new link in. Boom. All right. Yeah, I wish you could edit a tweet. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess because they're already sent out as notifications, it doesn't like you to do that. So. All right. So we are <laughs> we are live in this channel now. Um, yeah, it says we have 333 people, so I guess people are getting the message. Let me do one thing and delete this other event real quick. And then we'll get started. So I'm going to delete these two. And hold on. Sorry, folks, this is not <laughs> as professional as I had dreamed it being. Okay, cool. We're good. All right, Dave, you want to go ahead and get started? <laughs> After all, get started. All right. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Basically, I started the event and it wouldn't let me take it on air. So we had to start a new event. But now we are on air. I appreciate everybody joining us on a Sunday. And I have my buddy Dave, Dave Bias, who Hi, uh, Mike. Dave is a good friend of mine. We've known each other quite some time. Like I think probably back in the old Flickr days is where that started. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we were both big film nerds and totally into that. And that's how we met and connected. And then, oh, many years later, Dave is working with several film companies and ends up at Faranya, who most of you are familiar with um, because of their big Kickstarter project a couple of years ago. And I did a live broadcast with Dave. And so I'm recently in New York and we decided it was time to once again get together and maybe do a live talk and talk about Faranya and what's gone on since the Kickstarter. I know it's been a lot and uh, 
kind of jump into there. So is that a good place for us to, to start our, our, our tale today? Sure. Um, I, I was looking at the um, countdown for the, the broadcast, and it had our previous broadcast in a little uh, window. 870 days ago. <laughs> I saw that too. That's a lot of days. Which, uh, you know, I think we did that before we launched our Kickstarter. I think uh, we did it, you know, it was like a month or two before maybe. And it's, it's, it's been a, a long, long uh, haul since then. Um, well, and to back up just a second, if people are newer and they don't know what we're talking about. So Film Ferrania was a full-blown film company that made film in Italy for years and years and years from probably, when, when did it start, the 50s? Uh, no, the company was originally founded in uh, 1917. Uh, oh, way back. Yeah, they started making uh, proper film as we think of it today in 1923. Um, before that, they made uh, filter material, glass plates, that kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, and then in the 40s, 50s, uh, you know, they had a, they sort of became the Kodak of Italy, uh, making cameras and commercial film for, for consumers and also uh, a lot of uh, cinema film. And a lot of the big directors, the Italian classic uh, directors of the mid century, uh, last mid century, were using a uh, Frania stock uh, in their movies, mostly this P30 film that, uh, uh, we announced uh, on February 1st. Um, so all through the, the 50s and through the 60s, um, uh, they started making color film, of course, and, and um, they caught the attention of 3M in uh, the mid-60s, who bought them, who bought the company, Ferrania, uh, basically for their chemical expertise. Uh, <coughs> and then through the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, 3M, you know, built the research and development building that is now our factory uh, and, um, you know, did a lot of other stuff. They were selling to lots of, um, they were white labeling, you know, in other words, selling to lots of house brands. Uh, they sold film to Polaroid and under the Polaroid brand, the Konica brand, the Agfa brand. Um, and so when you bought Polaroid film, you were actually buying Ferrani film that was just we bought. If you bought 35 millimeter non-instant Polaroid film uh, that said made in Italy on it, then it came from the Ferrania factory. Ah, gotcha. Polaroid, of course, made uh, ordered products from many different suppliers, but um, that's always the trick, is if you find some strange film without a brand name on it that you recognize, if you look on the box and it says made in Italy, then it was made by, by Ferrania. Uh, in the 90s, they sort of switched gears a little bit and uh, became Imation, and they focused a lot at that point in time on magnetic media, um, still film, but film that recorded magnetically instead of photographically. And then in 99, um, they sold the company. Uh, it was bought by uh, an Italian investment group who uh, restored the Ferrania brand name. They released films uh, under the Solaris brand mostly, uh, for a while after that and then in roughly in 2009 but there was some overlap uh, they they closed operations and, and shut down the factory and the government moved in bought all the the whole campus that was remaining um, part of the original Ferrania company split off and became Ferrania Technologies and they're still around today they're our neighbors um, they've supplied us with uh, power and gas uh, uh, at various points in time. Um, and, you know, they've helped introduce us to a lot of the former employees, uh, who six of whom now work for us. And uh, Friday Technologies focuses on pharmaceutical products. They're off in one corner of the campus. We're off sort of in the opposite corner of the campus, if you look at it from Google Maps. And... Um, we're in one little 5,000 square meter building called uh, the LRF um, that is a mini factory. Um, it's, a, it's a tiny coder. It's a small chemical synthesis department. It's everything that you need to make film on a small scale uh, in this one building. And the Kickstarter that we did, 800 
some days ago. 70 days ago. Uh, was uh, specifically to raise money that we needed to buy equipment from other buildings on the campus that were about to be demolished, that were scheduled to be demolished. Um, now, a lot has happened between the end of our Kickstarter and today. Um, a lot more than anyone wants to hear from me at this moment. <laughs> uh, but if, just to kind of put it in a, in a super nutshell, like the smallest nutshell that I possibly can. Um, we had, at, at the end of the Kickstarter, we had the coder was cleaned. We had a lot of uh, materials that were left over from when Ferrania closed. We had an, everything sort of in place. We had a team of six people. That number hasn't changed over time. Uh, the people have changed, but the number of people hasn't changed. Right. Um, and we we were fairly certain that we could create uh, one batch uh, of a decent size of uh, color reversal film that was based on the old Scotch Chrome formula. And we could do all this because we were in the building as research and development team, you know. Uh, so we, we didn't have to, um, of course there are laws for manufacturers in right. every country, you know, right? You know, safety laws and all this kind of stuff. But and what film, they, by the way, is a pretty, I mean, you'll hit those things because it's not like just sticking hooves into a machine and it spits out film. Yeah. You've got chemicals and you've got, you know. It, it's, it's, it's very complex. And, uh, but we were granted access to the building as a research and development team to make this initial batch. And this initial batch was going to be the reward for Kickstarter backers. And then, you know, the government had already scheduled um, a lot of improvements to the building in order to bring it to industrial standards. In other words, to bring it concurrent with laws in Italy about safety, about, uh, you know, what it takes to be a manufacturer. Right. Um, unfortunately, that window that we had to make the film was slammed shut when contractors found asbestos in our basement. Oops, oops. Uh, and for various reasons, that asbestos took almost 90 days to remove. And uh, that 90 day window was our window. That was our single window before the government basically kicked everybody out of the building to do all the improvements that they needed to do. This included fixing the roof, installing a security fence, all these uh, things for the infrastructure of the building. Um, and that basically ate up the rest of 2015 and into 2016, because when the government um, contract ran out, uh, the work wasn't completely finished. So they had to basically rebudget for 2016 and come back and uh, finish some of the work. And some of that work still isn't finished <laughs> uh, because it's, you know, it's like, I think with any government, you have uh, the government, they hire, they take bids from contractors, those contractors come and do the work. Sometimes it's 10 different contractors, each doing a very specific thing. And it's been uh, a lot for um, our founders to, to wrangle all this and to kind of keep moving everything forward. Essentially, after all the delays, after all the issues with um, the, the building services, the gas, the water, the electric, uh, the steam power, uh, in September of 2016, the team was able to kind of reassemble and start to think, okay, now we're certified industrial manufacturer uh, with uh, a lot of new things in place that we hadn't expected to have when we made the first batch. A year and a half had passed, so a lot of the materials that were good a year and a half previously were not good anymore. They expired. Yeah. Um, and this is because we had pr prepared them, you know. Right. Uh, well, you as, thought you were going to be there, yeah. Well, yeah, and, you know, Ferrania's chemical expertise was really amazing. They, they were able to prepare components in, like, semi-finished state that were – that keep for – years and years and years, sometimes indefinitely. 
But once you take those and combine them and make an emulsion, that emulsion has an expiration date. And so that's, that's what happened to us. And so when the team came back together, they're like, okay, we have to make a new emulsion and we have to first, uh, we have to go one layer at a time. You know, color reversal film is 16 layers. Uh, our machine coats eight at a time and then you pass it through twice and it coats 16. Wow. Uh, but to, we had to work up to that. So we coated first one green layer. We made a video about it and everyone was very excited including us, um, because it, it proved that the coder worked. Then they, it came time to make a two-layer, uh, and two-layer film, black and white film, is photographic film. So the team went through our archives. We have 90 years' worth of books and papers and floppy disks uh, from the Frania buildings that are all ours now. Um, and they found the handwritten formula for P30 Wow! from the 50s. And more importantly, they found a slightly, slightly updated version that was actually made in the LRF in the early 70s. So they found a formula that was actually created in our building using our equipment. And we were like, okay, that's the one we should use because that's the one with the least variables. You know, we know that they made that in our building on our coder before, so making it again shouldn't be too much so of a problem. Theoretically, yeah. Right. So uh, by 1994, when I visited uh, Italy for the first time, uh, I got to visit the factory, and while I was there, uh, they coded the first, it was 17 meters, <laughs> Uh, first 17 meters of photographic film ever uh, by wow. our team uh, in in the three years that they've been working on that. Uh, it's just on just a technical guys. So, so, when, so when, when this comes, comes off the machine, off the machine um, um, it, it basically it's in a long sheet. And that's what you're talking about, the 17 meters, and then it's cut. Uh, it's in a roll. Four. It's in a roll about 20 centimeters wide, 23 centimeters, I think. And so it's yeah, about yay wide. And, uh, and however many meters long we make it, the, the, I think the maximum size of a roll that fits on our coder is 600 meters. Wow. And of course, we don't, we're not going to coat that much if we don't have to. So they coated 17 meters. It was just enough gotcha. right. to like start the coder, wait two seconds, and stop it. And that coated 17 meters because they, it was just a test. It was just, let's see if we can coat two layers yeah. successfully. Well, they cut, uh, they, they then slid it down to 35 millimeter bands, and Nicola walked around Florence and shot a roll. Uh, mm -hmm. This was just after I left and, and came back to the States. And the photo, uh, which we've posted on our site, of, of a, a, a horse and his handler in a beautiful piazza in, in downtown Florence, was it just shocked everybody it shocked me it shocked everybody in the factory that it was beautiful it was so good i mean even with some issues uh, with bubbles that made streaks across the film and you know there were definitely defects in the coating sure sure uh, but but the picture the, the image really shown through uh that that the that this emulsion which we were just going to use for testing was amazing yeah, and so it's gonna work. Quick question too. So this was the P thirty that was the the old cinema film. Is it the same recipe as cinema film? It is. So is this something you could like? If you had a roll of it, can you go process it in the bathroom at home? Is it is it because didn't cinema film have another layer in there that of chemicals? Well, we, we of course didn't put a remjet layer on okay, it. Okay, there's no uh, remjet. Okay. So shooting it in a cinema camera as it as it is as we're gonna release it uh, won't work, but it is cinema film. But uh, for still photography, you're, you're good yeah. to go. And, and what we've discovered is that because it's cinema film, uh, we sent out a few rolls for testing from the second batch that we ran, which was about uh, 40 meters, 50 meters, I think. Uh, and we, we cut that into some rolls. We sent some to uh, Studio Fahrenheit and PF uh, Punto Photo Group in Milan mm -hmm. uh, because they're nearby. And then I got uh, a small bulk roll here in the U.S. that I cut off some rolls and sent to uh, some people here. 
and we tested in three different labs in the U.S. because we really just wanted to see, okay, with with bare minimum information, uh, you know, shoot at this ISO. <laughs> Please try to use a manual camera uh, <laughs> and send it to one of these labs. Uh, each of these labs used different processes to process the film. Right. And then we had a big feedback form, and everyone filled in all this data that went straight back to the factory. And so did the people in Milan, of course. They tried different processing techniques. We just posted a story from Matteo Di Giovanni, who was one of the guys who, who tested for us. So, we, you know, the idea was, okay, it's cinema film. It really kind of wants to be processed in cinema processor, like D96, which is uh, Kodak's cinema uh, process, processing solution. However, not everyone has access to cinema processing chemicals, so we needed to test it in a variety of different normal processing chemicals uh, that people can just buy anywhere uh, or take to a lab and just drop it off in the lab uses, you know, most labs use a, a fairly narrow range of, of chemistry. So we got the results back from these tests. The results kind of showed us what we suspected that um, the film is, is, is a little finicky when it comes to being processed in regular still black and white chemistry. So the team has, uh, over the past couple of weeks, has done a bunch of different tests to, um, it, it's funny, we caught, you know, uh, when Nicola and I speak, um, he sometimes doesn't have the English words for some things. <laughs> and, and he, he um, couldn't think of the word for starch because there's a matte layer on the film uh, that is basically made of starch, and he kept, he kept referring to it as potato. Uh, the <laughs> potato. This became a joke between us. We called it the potato. potato. So what we did was we made basically different concentrations of this, this starch that's in this matte layer, uh, and this has a direct effect on the, the way the film uh, works with different processing chemistry. That's very cool. Now, real quick, because people are asking in the chat, we're talking about 35 mil right now because that's what's being tested at this point. Um, for Anya, in the future, there are plans for 120 and, I don't know, sheet film. What What, what is the, the lay of the land on that? Most certainly. You know, our Kickstarter campaign was for four formats, mm -hmm. uh, 35 millimeter, 120 in still, and Super 8 and 16 in cinema film. And that's still that's still the plan for the, the near future. Right. Um, it turns out 120 film, it's kind of tough to buy the backing paper. We, have we talked a, about that a little bit in New York, and I, th that was funny because you don't even think about that. You think it's just paper, but the backing paper has to be black, so you don't, I mean. And that black is a very specific chemical formula, and it has to be coated. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of paper manufacturers don't also have coders. You, you know, can't so. just grab paper and throw it in there, yeah. Now, the paper itself has to be a, is a very specific, you know, and if you check, like, Fuji's backing paper, Kodak's backing paper, they're slightly different from one another. Um, we have a formula for backing paper, and we have um, uh, uh, an old friend of, of mine who's now working with the team to try to source the materials for the new backing paper. Hmm. Um, so, you know... Hopefully, by the time we're ready for color film in the early summer, we'll have that problem solved. Um, the cinema films also, you know, you know, we have all the machinery to to do all this stuff from beginning to end, but we're in a kind of a chicken and egg scenario where we have the machines, but it costs a certain amount of money to take those machines from our storage and incorporate them into our building. Yeah, you know, you've got to help. Yeah, just move them, plug them in, and turn them on. It's not. It's not nearly that easy. We wish. It <laughs> we wish, right? Um, they have to be really kind of because the building itself is sort of a, a machine, and so to put a new, you can think of the building as the body, and to put a new machine in, it's like doing an organ transplant. Right, right. It has to be hooked into the body exactly properly. Uh, and this is not, it, it's not impossible and it's not, uh, even really that difficult, but it costs money. It takes time. 
Yeah. Dave, let me, let me ask you, cause you shot on the P30 and, um, people are asking, um, like, how is the grain structure on that? This isn't like a T max or it's an old grain structure, correct? It's, uh, yes, it's an older grain structure, but it's, you know, got no grain, no visible grain. It's really, yeah, it's, it's a clean, it's 80. So yeah. When you process it in D96, especially mm -hmm. it is, you know, Nicola said, maybe it's too, you know, maybe we need some grain or people are going to confuse it for digital. You know? <laughs> it was that clean. It's that clean and it's super, super sharp. And uh, on the, on the images, the, um, on the test photos there, there's the, the slitter ended up making marks on it. Was that the deal? Well, it, it's even more complicated than that as we've discovered. And Nicola is preparing a little video that we're going to post this week that, that explains it end to end. But mm -hmm. basically, um, the, Coating was fine. Uh, the, the, the baby slitter, we call it, the one that cuts it into 35 millimeter widths, yep. uh, had a roller on it that the rubber, the friction uh, on the rubber, uh, had, had gotten pits over time, a little microscopic, right. oh. that uh, weren't visible uh, to anyone until we actually put the film through it right. uh, and caused these scratches. So that's, that's been fixed. Um, we also had a, an issue with a similar issue on the 1917 slitter and uh, a roller in the coder. Uh, mm -hmm. All that had this rubber layer that had gotten hardened over the years and, you know, had these little microscopic uh, defects. So that's all, that stuff's all either been fixed or being fixed as we speak. So that, um, but the, the last roll that we ran uh, you can see the the stuff that was shot by the people in Milan has no scratches, and that's because by the time they sent more rolls to Milan, they had fixed this issue. And so, yeah, it's just unfortunate that I got the roll that had the worst scratches, <laughs> and so when I cut these rolls, yeah, you know, all the test photographers here in the U.S., uh, you know, I sent them these rolls, super happy, and then we got the results back, and we're like, oh, scratches. But you know, it is what it is, and and we're not uh, we're not hiding from anyone about you know it's there's probably it's probably questionable to share these results with the world, uh, scratched images and stuff like that. But I think for the most part, the reaction has been universally positive. I mean, a few people here and there have wondered about the scratches, and and you know want well, to make sure it's not in the final product. But of course. Dave, I think one thing too is I mean, like what we're doing today, which is educating people on what, because that's the part that I find fascinating is that, you know, what goes into actually manufacturing film and how difficult this is. And then the amount of testing. I mean, I think we're all used to a world where, especially with software and Facebook and all the things we, we deal with on the computer of just like a new version comes out and things are fixed. And this is like a tedious old school process of making an emulsion that's going to stick to something that's going to work. And I think it's really interesting. I mean, I had the opposite reaction personally when it was like, wait a minute. I mean, I wasn't looking for scratches, but the fact that they'd made a black and white film was cool. I mean, it was amazing. Of course, all that stuff gets worked out over time when you get into testing, but uh, it's not at this point that like, you know, when I order Tri-X from B&H or something that I'm not worried about that. This is a very different place that you guys are at, you know? Yeah. In, in fact, it, it's funny. It's, you know, what we're doing it could be construed in some ways as being uh, old school or, or old fashioned or whatever, but our designation uh, in the official records of Italian manufacturing is that we are a, a nanotech company. Hmm. Uh, we applied for this status in order to be able to get some uh, EU grant money. Uh, it's a sort of an in kind like, we spend money on research and they sort of reimburse a part they of the some of that. Yeah. Uh, because it's ex exactly what's happening. They didn't call it nanotechnology when they invented it. And we think of nanotechnology in a very different way today. Sure, sure. But you're dealing with things that you need an electron microscope to see. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And you're dealing with an emulsion. And an emulsion is just like when you make a vinaigrette. You know, you mix oil and, and vinegar together, 
and you stir it really heavily and it, it makes one new liquid, right? Yeah. But if you leave it sit, it separates back into its layers. Yeah. And that's exactly what film emulsion is, except yeah. it has to separate into those layers almost instantaneously as it's laid onto the plastic base. And it and the entire thickness of these layers is, you know, less than a human hair. So uh, it is nanotechnology. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, and and yet it's it's producing analog film. So it, it's uh, it's a, a strange um, update to the kind of idea of what it is to make film to call it nanotechnology. But it it it, it really is um, fairly accurate description, and it's done by you know six people, <laughs> uh, which I once I visited the factory and I saw sort of the scale of everything. The idea that six people were doing this was profound to me. I mean, sure, it, I it was, um, you know, it, it was hard to describe because, you know, you're talking about people who have done this for most of their lives. They have this enormous amount of expertise in making film. Each of them uh, carefully chosen because they fill a very specific role, but they all have to kind of overlap at the same time and do multiple jobs. Yeah. Uh, and the the flexibility of our team and the experience that they bring to the table is entirely why I'm sitting here uh, and, and why we were able to make this first test run and why we're going to uh, release this P30 film. Of course, you know, we said for years and years, we're not making black and white, the market's too crowded, blah, blah, blah. But at, at the end of the day, we just loved the product. You know, yeah. well, that's what's important, you know. I think yeah. it's interesting, too. Um, you know, obviously, film and analog photography is, I mean, we've talked ad nauseum about this, is that it's a much different um, audience size, a much different market share than it was in the 90s, even uh, pre digital. But I think yeah. one of the things that's interesting about you, and you've been like this even pre Ferrania, is that you've always been an evangelist for. You know, there is a market for this stuff and there is a way to sell it and there's a way to go about it. And um, that's what one thing that I like to share with with the audience is that, you know, we've had many conversations about that and, and how, you know, you've got to find a way to manufacture it to meet that niche. And so when you talk about a team of six, it is profound. It is amazing. But in your philosophy, that's kind of exactly the kind of scalability and uh, that it was stealth script, quite the right word, but you have to be nimble like that you know we have to stay small um, yeah. if you have a hundred salaries to pay you've got to sell yeah. a lot of film to make up for that and that's you know well you know first of all we have a building that is uh we're only using two floors uh, of the five right now uh so we're keeping our power expenses low as low as possible right um we have uh, six people and like i said that number has remained constant because uh, even if we've changed the composition of the six uh, over time as necessary, because this is what Nikola budgeted a very long time ago. And it's, you know, his, his um, restraint with uh, spending money <laughs> has, is, is really the reason we're still around because right. we've had to go through a lot of pain uh, to, to get here. Um, you know, the, At the end, you know, the, the, the end result is, is is really what matters. And I think this has been our focus for the last few months is we, we need to kind of share with everybody what's going on and, and why they're, especially our Kickstarter backers, why their rewards are so late. Uh, and a big reason why we wanted to offer P30 was to kind of give some backers who are just sick and tired of waiting a, a way out, you know, a, a way to end the pain, so to speak. Yeah, sure, sure. And, and offered them, we can exchange a reward for P30 if you like. And so we sent out this big email on February 1st. And, uh, you know, we have gotten a, a fantastic response to it. I still spend uh, part of my day chasing down the people here and there who didn't get the email for some reason or can't uh, complete right. the form. And, you know, for us, P30 is, is not just a proof of concept. It's, it's, it's not just like, hey, we can actually make film. 
it's it's really that we love it and uh, we, we didn't need to release it necessarily and we've been promising color film to people for so long that uh, sure sure throwing some black and white in the mix seemed kind of odd but let me ask you something since we're talking about p30 for a minute um, Harley Cowan had asked something in the chat uh, does the amount does the amount of silver in the p30 emulsion compare how does it compare to other similar films well it's it's five grams per square meter um, I didn't really have much idea myself of what that meant uh, until uh, I've been carrying on a thread on APUG, which is uh, the Analog Photographers Users Group, which is full of uh, really smart people. Absolutely. Uh, some of whom used to work in the business. Uh, and so from what I've been told from uh, um, a couple of users on APUG, it's definitely higher than average. Uh, it's, it's, um, in fact, most modern, uh, black and white films have figured out how to use less silver and get the same result. Interesting. But, uh, we're using this formula from this, from basically from the sixties, but tweaked slightly in 1970. Uh, and it just called for that much silver and, uh, the end result, especially if it's processed very carefully. Uh, 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 which is an aspect that we're still kind of working on. We want to make it easier to process. Right, right. Is that you get this super lush uh, amount of grays, like this really wide gamut of grays. Um, I don't know if I'm not speaking scientifically here. I'm speaking as an observer of the results. Sure, sure. Um, and then depending on the processing chemistry that's used, you, you can kind of, tweak the contrast. You can push it up or push it down based on uh, the, the processing chemistry that's used. And the, the super rich silver content is, um, from what I've been told from people who got very technical about it, it kind of increases the take up. Mm -hmm. it, it basically, it increases the chance that more silver molecules will actually be become one grain of, of the actual end product and won't wash away uh, when you do the bath. So by putting more silver in it, you're just kind of capturing more uh, information. Two questions. Well, one thing I want to talk about is the alpha program that you guys are doing because I think that goes yeah. along with what you're talking about here. But also, when, when what's the availability date on um, when can you buy P30? Well, we don't have an actual date right as of today. Um, there's still some some things in the factory. We of course want to be able to know how much film we're going to have to sell, uh, and and on what schedule, because mm -hmm. we're basically going to be making it on the fly and pushing it to our warehouse as right. it's made. And so uh, once we figure out a few things, we've already figured out we need to scale up <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so there's some work going on. Uh, again, this is going to be described in more detail this week on our on our site and in our Facebook posts. Um, the end of the month, you know, probably in the last week of the month, we expect to be able to launch the shop, cool. uh, and then we'll start taking uh, orders. Uh, those orders will probably ship in two to four weeks after we open the shop. This is. Next well, couple of months here we're looking at, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the scaling up part. The, you know, we actually didn't technically expect uh, the response that we got to our form that we, that we got. Uh, a That's lot of cool. people want to keep their old reward and get that in June or July uh, and, it all, yeah. and then buy some P30 film. So color film is definitely still in the plan. I mean, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, Ivano, who we've uh, introduced in other videos, uh, that's strictly his work. Right. Uh, is pushing forward on the color emulsion. Uh, the other five people on the team are right now focused on just getting some P30 made and out the door. But as soon as that starts to flow, uh, Luisa and Corrado, who are basically our, our chemistry team along with Ivana, so three people working on chemistry, mm -hmm. um, they can actually just mix up a huge batch of, of P30 emulsion, 
the coding team can take it from there and they can return to working on the, the color emulsion. So as of today, we think uh, June, July is the window for when the color film will be ready. Gotcha. And then, then the alpha program you were talking about the other day. Yes. Yeah, the alpha program, and we're calling this film alpha for a, a very specific reason. And that's because, you know, we've made, I don't know, 20 or 30 test rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicola shot three or four of them himself. Uh, we sent uh, about, uh, uh, I think, 10 to Milan, and I uh, sent out uh, 13 here in the U.S. And so we've received a lot of good information back, but that was a pre-production batch. Right. And that the data that we got from that went to create this next batch. Uh, and this next batch, we're pushing out. You know, we're going to sell it. Uh, we're going to do some tests on it, of course, to try to get some more uh, processing information. Mm -hmm. But um, all of our internal tests so far indicate that it's ready to be an alpha. And this alpha program um, is essentially just like with software, um, there might be some bugs. It, if you don't follow our directions exactly, it might not work, you know, the way you expect. Right, right. Um, and it's, it's a mild disclaimer. Like, we, we are really, really confident that the alpha film will stand on its own and that it's not going to need too many changes to become the final version. But... We're, res we're, we're reserving uh, that concept until we put it out in the wild. You know, mm -hmm. we need it shot in every kind of camera and we need people not to follow the rules, <laughs> you know. And so what we're going to do is we're going to offer a feedback form. And for people who give us good data about the way the film was shot and processed, uh, if um, they can share that with us, we're going to give them a little coupon to buy another roll in the store. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I think well, that's the exciting part, part that, that, you know, when you, you think of like, like classic, classic. Emulsion, like Tri-X, I mean, there's five or six different looks and effects that you can get doing that. This is a new film that doesn't have all those years behind it of people breaking it and trying to play with it and do something different. And I think that's actually kind of cool to have that discussion around it, too. Yeah, it's... I mean, someone on uh, someone commented. I, I don't remember where. Uh, so you're you're asking people to pay to test your film. Uh, okay, uh, sure. And, you know, no, we're not. You right. know, we are asking people who want to share their data with us. Uh, you know, this will help. You know, this extends our ability to test it in a wide variety of situations. We don't expect the alpha program to last long at all. And we may actually not re really need to do anything to take it from alpha to the final version. It might be fine. Uh, well, we just, I, I think though, I, and I would make the argument. It has to be in the wild. Like we can't just yeah. test it in our lab and, and the few labs that we've already used. It has to be tested in different temperatures, different parts of the world different kinds of labs, home processing, lab processing, you know, we need people to push it, pull it, uh, shoot yeah, it. See, Dave, I think there's clearly a win-win here for, for both sides, for you guys, obviously, but I think for somebody like me or somebody who wants to shoot film, particularly a beginner, and I think that certainly within the analog photography, it's a pretty tight community, and to be able to test stuff and maybe get pointers from somebody else. Hey, I got really good results doing it this way in this temperature versus this. And this is how you really want to do it. Everybody's going to end up getting a better procedure based off of that. I think, you know, exactly. And you know, it's, it's one of these situations where we could spend another six months just testing. Sure. Testing, testing, testing. Uh, and even then, you know, who knows someone has a, you know, puts it in a camera from the 30s uh, and shoots it in the tundra <laughs> and yeah, yeah. processes it in caffeinol. Sub-freezing temperatures, yeah, and then develops in the coffee in their thermos, right? Right. You know, it, I mean, it, it needs to go out into the wild, you know, yeah. and, and uh, I, I keep saying that expression. Um, 
But well, but I think that's the exciting part of it, though. Is I just had someone was asking if we're going to sell it uh, worldwide. Um, oh, and if there's going to be a kit, yes. So part of the um, next wave of testing that we're going to do internally is we're going to send a couple rolls to labs so that we can really develop what we're going to just call a best practices uh, right. document. And basically everyone who, when, when the shop launches, everyone who buys a roll will get this best practices document. And this best practices document is going to be a guideline of like, okay, if you want it to look what we think of as the best possible uh, uh, outcome, uh, please use this kind of camera, probably a manual camera, where you can control your settings, uh, and use these developers, these temperatures, these times. Um, that best practices, of course, you can completely ignore, <laughs> or you can follow to the T. You know, it, it's 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 going to be there, uh, and. The, before we release it, you know, we're going to make sure that everything is that's in it is going to yield what we consider the best result from the film. Sure. Uh, and hopefully, during the alpha program, we'll learn a little bit more and perhaps tweak that best practices document a little bit. Uh, there's also the potential uh, when we have some extra time for our staff. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. We can actually produce the original processing chemistry for people who like to process at home. Oh, did it have its own? It has its own. I think it was called R81. That's uh, pretty cool. Maybe it was R18. I, I'm a little dyslexic on the, the names. All right. Um, and we can produce it. We, we know we can produce it. Um, and it's we have all the, the components to produce it. It's just a matter of, you know, do we take people off of making color film to make some processing chemistry? Right, right. Or do we, pick or do we rely on people to, you know, try to follow the instructions for B76 and Rodinol and HC110, like the, the most common uh, processing chemistry that's already out there? Here's a wild question with R18 or whatever it is. Is it something you could mix yourself? Um, no, it's proprietary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, but it and it specifically was made for processing P thirty though. So mm -hmm. uh, there's there's an incentive for us to make it. Of course, we're not going to get a bunch of labs to switch to using it because <laughs> uh, you know yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're we're not Kodak. Um, but uh, for people who like to process at home, it, it I think it could be a great uh, kit that we'll sell on our site. Uh, uh, and we figured out how to package it properly so that we can ship it because uh, shipping chemistry around the world is tricky. Um, so that's something that's on the radar for the near future. Sure, sure. Uh, it's just a matter of like, we have to balance um, our team and our yeah, time yeah. Uh, properly. And we have a lot of people who still want color. We still want color. And so we don't want to take too much attention away from that. But if, we start the P30 process and it starts to flow and maybe we hire a couple more people to run the coder. Uh, this frees up our chemistry department strictly to make chemistry and um, they should be able to have some time according to Nicola the last time we spoke within the next few months to make some of this, uh, this original processing chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you know, we, we certainly, you know, we've been contacted by a company in Rome who is going to, uh, who's been pre-announcing uh, this thing called Labbox, which is a daylight loading uh, film tank. It's really cool. The company's called Arzimago. You can Google them. Uh, they're going to launch their Kickstarter, I think, pretty soon. And, you know, and there was a recent Kickstarter for uh, this thing, which I have sitting right beside me which is to process a uh, four by five film and you pour chemistry in one end and you shake it and you pour it out the other end. And so there are already like some people who are making home processing a little easier. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. We think the lab box is really beautiful and, and really solves a, a big problem with regard to home processing. But with that said, um, 
the problem is really with labs and people need to support their local lab and uh, we you know the people who like to process at home it's fine it, 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 we're not gonna say you have to go to a lab but we think that the lab situation for a lot of people is is very dire there are some places in the world where you have to ship your film hundreds and hundreds of miles before you before it lands in a lab and uh, for film it doesn't technically like to be shipped around so much um, there's always a chance that it could get x-rayed or get exposed to mag something magnetic and and distort the, 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 the film so supporting your local lab the lab nearest to you we think is is really critical and we, we're trying to uh, help promote that and you know we're working with labs in this P30 launch specifically so that we can offer people, uh, you know, here's what you tell your lab. Please have, tell your lab to process it this way. Uh, if your lab doesn't use that process and uses something similar, they should be able to figure out, you know, we need to provide a baseline. And then most labs can take that baseline and adjust it to whatever chemistry they're using. W will it, will it work something like, like, like six 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 that a lab, that a lab probably probably uses? Use or uh, D76 has proven to be one of the best so far. Um, D76 is essentially, it's similar to D96. Mm -hmm. D96 is basically for cinema film and D76 for s still film. They're both made by Kodak. And the results are pretty similar then? Or? The, the results in D96 are better, uh, to be sure. Hmm. But uh, with D76, with a certain amount of agitation, and uh, a certain dilution, which uh, we're going to publish when we release when the film. Yeah, no. uh, we've had really, really good results. Mm -hmm. We've also had good results in Rodno. Uh, we've had uh, really good results in uh, Microfen, which is a slightly more expensive uh, uh, push-pull chemistry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we had interesting results in Xtal. Xtal is what. Uh, Matteo refers to as an aggressive developer that tries to bring out contrast in film yeah, yeah. and our film uh, is, is, is really susceptible to that. Uh -huh. uh, so in Xtal we got uh, some really super contrasty things but we think that simply by altering the time a little bit and, and perhaps the dilution a little bit uh, you can get uh, great results in, in Xtal as well. So again we're going to do a lot of a lot more testing over the next couple of weeks before the shop launches, just to kind of fill in this chart that we've already started to make mm -hmm. of all the different chemistry uh, and the processing times based on what ISO you shoot at. So if you shoot it at 50, at 80, at uh, 160, you know, here's the the time and temperature to process and dilution to process in this kind of chemistry. It's um, a chart that. You know, if you go to Ilford's website and you download their spec sheets for their films, these charts are pretty are standard. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, um, this is a good question. question. Okay. Uh, um, if anybody would know the answer, it would be you, Dave. Doesn't film have to be calibrated to the magnetism of where it's shot? For example, Northern Hemisphere film doesn't work as well in the Southern Hemisphere. Does this sound familiar to you? That does not sound familiar to me. Um, I've never heard of that, but uh. yeah, as far as I know, um, that's not a thing. I could be wrong. People not, are mentioning New Fifty Five Monobath. Have you tried that yet? We have not tried the Monobath. Uh, I know that um, Punto Photo Group <clears throat> in Milan uh, have a Monobath that they use. I'm not sure. I don't think it's the New Fifty Five Monobath. Um, and you also can make your own. That's not proprietary. Yeah. And our Arzama Zamago has a mono bath. Yeah. The the Punto Photo Group mono bath didn't work so well. Mm. Um, but there are any number of reasons why, and we need to retest. Sure. And, sure. Uh, part of you know, as soon as I have some new sample rolls, you know, I'm going to send uh, a couple to the new Fifty Five guys to see if their mono bath works, um, and I mean, works is, of course, it'll work. It works with the film, right? Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll work. It'll make, it'll process the film. It's, yeah, but it's always it? a matter of, like, you know, how much of the gray does it retain, how much contrast does it introduce, et cetera. 
that'll be a real wild card because I found that to be kind of a, I mean, it, and it's not, um, I'm not being negative or positive either one. It's a very unusual developer uh, being one step. And yeah, it was, it, I got results when I tried that with, you know, standard films, HP5, whatever, that were very different than I got with other developers. So yeah, it will be interesting to kind of see what it, how it acts and stuff like that. Yeah, and we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna try to test in as many different things as we can before sure. we put up the store, but we can't test every possible way. We just can't. Yeah, but that's, I think, where your crowdsourcing kind of idea comes yeah. into play. That's I think not, that could be fun for people, you know. Yeah, we're, as I've explained, everything that we do, uh, I mean, first of all, I don't work in the factory. I'm not a scientist. Sure. Or a I, you know, answer emails. <laughs> and, yeah, and but you've also hung out on the APUG forums enough to know that that's exactly the first thing people are going to do is try and break it. I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to encourage that because sure. you know, th this is how we extend our capabilities. Uh, basically, we have six people. Uh, like I said, we still want to stay on track for color in June or July. And in order to do that, uh, we can't, we have to be very careful about where people put their time. Sure. And we've done a bunch of internal testing over the past couple of weeks in several different chemistries uh, that we were able to get quickly. Uh, we haven't tested everybody's chemistry everywhere. We haven't, you know, um, we've been staying basically with the standard 20 degrees Celsius, which right. I don't even know what it is in Fahrenheit, but uh, uh, for, for the temperature, which is, Pretty much the yeah, same yeah. temperature that most labs use, um, and we've been sticking around, uh, uh, you know, a, a fairly narrow window of time uh, for the processing. And you know, Matteo and his people at Studio Fahrenheit have helped us uh, a lot, and will continue to help us. And you know, we think that, yeah, uh, like you said, w once we release it and everyone tries to break it, we'll, we'll learn a lot more. And hopefully the people that do break it will share with us uh, why, what they did, you know, how they broke it. Very cool. Echo? Let me ask you something, Dave. I'm just curious about this. So um, the actual facilities for Ferragna in Italy. So let's say everything's wildly successful. In 10 years, do you think they'd be able to support making four by five and all these other things um, in, at that facility or would, there, would they have to relocate or I mean, do you have the space there to do it? Okay, well, yes. Yes and sorry, no. We're both putting on headphones because I didn't realize there was a, a noise, so sorry about that for you guys. So the answer to that is yes and no. Um, yeah. So when we launched the Kickstarter, it was to buy Big Boy, Trixie, and Walter. These were very cutesy names that we gave to very, very, very complex machinery. Uh, and we bought that stuff. Um, Trixie, however, is uh, a building. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's sort of like the LRF. It's, it's a building and machine in one. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I stood there looking at the equipment when I was there in December and I'm like, how did you guys ever think that you can move this? And they both looked at me. They're like, of course we can move it. We don't want to. Uh, it's going to be expensive to move it, but of course it can be moved. Uh, I'm like, well, wouldn't it be better to try to get this building? And Nicola goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in fact, uh, you know, we're going to try to get a second building uh, on the campus that has not been destroyed. And, and um, in fact, we can sort of step in, in the middle and say, please don't destroy this building, that would give us the ability to make our own base material, which right. would be huge. Um, the rest of our equipment is in another building, a storage building that's the size of an aircraft hangar, and all of that equipment does need to come into the LRF at some point or another. And it, it's hard to describe without seeing a, a floor plan, but the LRF is five floors, and three of those floors are literally, uh, you know, 50 tiny rooms per floor. All mm -hmm. of them, uh, there's a, an outer ring that has windows, and that's where the offices are. 
for people. And then there's an inner ring that's behind all these like double doors that's completely dark. And most of the machinery that we're going to install needs to be installed in these in these rooms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, one of the rewards that we offered to to some backers was the ability to name some of these rooms, <laughs> and we're really excited because we're going to uh, finally get to move forward on that uh, very soon, and um, and be able to name uh, some of these rooms after the uh, our Kickstarter backers. Um, <laughs> okay. Did you see the one that just came in? Oh, um, yeah, I'd rather not go there, to be honest. But uh, as it stands today, uh, we do have to pay import duties on the film. Um, it's it's all factored into the to the cost. We don't expect that we're going to get blocked at the port or anything like that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, that of course remains to be seen. I mean, um, uh, uh, this is I'm, actually interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm reading some questions that are coming in. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the Tricentic. Uh, reciprocity. Uh, no, we do not know anything about the reciprocity characteristics yet. Uh, we may not know by the time that it's released, but, you know, as with so many things with our company, uh, we're not going to just put it out and walk away and not talk to people. Um, we expect to uh, have an ongoing conversation with people as the film is, is, is being used about uh, things that we haven't been able to test, like the shelf life. Right. You know, it, we have made a couple of roles and we put them in the, the, the tool <laughs> that we have that rapidly ages them. It simulates, yeah, it simulates aging, yeah. It simulates, and so far we know that it's good for six months. Right. Uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's not actually six months. <laughs> right. Yeah, we won't know for another couple of weeks if it's good for a year. You know, like it, it, right. it's, a, it's a very much an ongoing process, and I think this is something that is really tough for uh, anybody outside of our little bubble to, to, to really sink in because you know we're not making and selling film like anybody else has ever done you know right. no one um has been as open as we've been about our problems <laughs> uh no one has has decided to put a film out into the public without like over a year of testing or more in fact uh you know our own team when they worked for 3m uh have we're like, this is not the way you do it. Um, <laughs> I bet, yeah. You know, this has to be tested this way and that way and this way and that way, including Marco, our, our co-founder. Uh, but, you know, with our team being so small, with our community being relatively large, uh, you know, and, and very active and, and supportive of us, we felt like, why not? Let's go ahead and push this out. Uh, we're going to sell it at a slightly lower price than our normal films will be sold. Mm -hmm. um, we're still trying to figure that out too because the euro and the dollar are changing. Okay. Uh, um, and we're also going to try to uh, include uh, VAT in the European. Anyway, it's it's a long process to figure out the price. We still have volumes and volumes of data that we have to sort through from all of our backers and uh, who filled out this new form. There's a lot of work to be done, but, you don't but, it, but it's an ongoing thing, and, and we yeah. expect to communicate with everybody on an ongoing basis. But the pricing structure won't be, I mean, you're not going to charge $30 for a roll of film. It'll be oh, in no. line with the market, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, we're never going to be the cheapest film on the market, you know, sure. because That's we don't right. have the scale to do that, but uh, we're, we're also not going to be the most expensive. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you saw the uh, question that came in. Camera store folks are asking about being distributors. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we would like to distribute. <laughs> yeah. We've had a, a, a huge outpouring of people from all over the world who want to sell the film. Um, you know, all things in good time is, is really what I can say. Right. You know, what we need to do first is take care of our Kickstarter backers. They, they, they put us here in the first place uh, and we want to make sure that they're taken care of. And then uh, our customers 
who aren't backers, who've been waiting and waiting and waiting alongside the backers, we want to make sure they're taken care of. And the only way we can do this feasibly with the production capacity that we have as of today is to do it on our website, selling it direct to individual people. Um, and then as we can, uh, as we're able to ramp up production and we are, they've actually spent the last week almost strictly on that topic of how to ramp up production more quickly than we had originally planned. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just, yeah, I just saw that up. too. <laughs> uh, so uh, we think right now, we think April or May, we should be able to start rolling out to stores, to other stores. Um, that should be the point in time when we kind of get up to speed with, uh, with the, the direct orders that are coming straight from our website uh, to a point where we can start to pick and choose some people around the world. Uh, we already have a very short list of people who have supported us up to this point. And then we have another much longer list of people who have, have come in uh, since we made our announcement. And it's going to be with everybody, with, with backers, with regular customers, with wholesale customers. It's going to be first come, first serve. Sure. I mean, it's the only fair way to do it. And we have a, a bit of a task ahead of us to ramp up uh, quickly enough to deal with all this new demand. Um, but for sure, uh, we want to put the film in stores that care about film. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also worth mentioning too. Um, you guys are, people will ask me cause the Kickstarter project ended two years ago. And a lot of times yeah. I would get tech support questions cause I had you on before. Um, and I think it's worth noting as well that you guys are very good about keeping the website updated, uh, with stuff. And then you are also a point of contact cause you're the marketing guy. So. If somebody was interested in, for instance, in being a distributor or had we actually, about the film. We actually have a reseller sign up form on our website. Okay. So on the homepage of our website, you scroll down so you see a red picture of Orson Welles sitting in a chair in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right below there, there's a reseller sign up. And uh, basically everyone who's been emailing us through uh, or are contacting us through Facebook or Twitter or emailing us through one of our other email addresses. I've been telling them all, please fill out that form because that's the, you know, that's the way that we can get all the data that we need about the company uh, and, and then start to um, consult that list when we're ready to, to start selling to, to shops. Um, and in fact, because we're such a small team, we really hope that people will buy from other places. You know, yeah. uh, we're going to sell it direct and we're going to ship around the world. Uh, that's going to be expensive for some people, depending on where you're located until we can open up more warehouses, blah, blah, blah. It's logistics, you know, and logistics are kind of a nightmare. No, uh, sure, sure. That we've been trying to deal with behind the scenes. And um, so as soon as we can add wholesale, partners, people who want to resell the film for us, we're going to because we want people to be able to buy it where they want to buy it. And also, we have one product. Yeah. P30 uh, right now. Yeah. Um, and you and know, I know when I buy film, uh, I don't buy one. I don't buy five rolls of one kind of film. Right. Sure. I usually buy a couple of different formats, a couple of like some films I like. Um, you know, a specific kind of film in 120, or I like a, a different kind of film in 35, a different kind of film in 4x5. So we want to push it to stores that, you know, have this kind of film focus, that have a, a way to ship, you know, multiple products to, to, to people, and where the shipping cost is um, low because it's close to you. You know, right, right. Uh, so we're going to list our wholesale partners, our resellers, very prominently on our shop. Dave, so, uh, it also somebody had asked. Um, we were talking about the samples of P30 earlier, and those are on the Film for Ronnie website, correct? The sample images are yes yeah. on on our website. There's um, if you go to our website, right in the top navigation, you'll see a P30 link, uh, and um, you can. See it there. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up with some of the 
Yeah. So someone asked, will the film ship with a filter for digital cameras so that you can basically get the same results with a digital camera? No, it won't. Yeah. Um, we are, are certainly not against digital. Um, a lot of our videos have been digitally captured. You know, I'm, I got my iPhone right here. You know? <laughs> Wait, that shit's film, right? <laughs> no. Um, we're not against digital. Um, uh, and we are using a digital technology right now. Um, but we're, we're not programmers. You know, we're scientists who make film. And um, our primary concern is just that. You know, we can't, we're not looking to hire a company that makes a filter. Uh, I'm sure there's companies out there who will buy our film and uh, make a filter that tries to look like it. Um, I, I think for us, the idea that you would take your digital photo and, and m try to make it look like film instead of just actually shooting film is, um, you know, it, it's fine. It, it, it does its thing. It achieves a, a certain look. Uh, and I guess there's a perception that it saves money. Um, that's, of course, been debated endlessly. But we, we just think it's simpler to shoot film than to uh, take a digital file and Photoshop it so it looks like film. Um, so, no, we're, we're not going to release a filter ourselves. Uh, maybe somebody else will release a filter that makes a digital photo look like P30. If so, uh, we hope that they contact us and, and ask <laughs> us first. <laughs> uh, but um, they'll just call it, you know, D30 or something. <laughs> D30, I like you know, it. And, and then, you know, because uh, we did register P30 as a trademark. Um, the... Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other like big questions here. This is a big one that just came in, and and I think it just in, in terms of R and D. Did you see that one? So basically, ah. it says people don't understand that we're working on new emulsions. Uh, are they just doing research into brand new stuff or going through the back catalog? So, well, we're starting with the back catalog, but uh, we're synthesizing from from scratch. You know, so we're synthesizing new chemistry. Uh, based on form, uh, historical formula in the case of P30. For our chrome film, uh, we had that window of opportunity that I spoke about previously right. to make something that was based almost directly on Scotch chrome, which was um, 100 ASA chrome that was released during the 3M Frania time. And you know, my understanding, we haven't talked about it directly in just the last few weeks, but my understanding is that we no longer have the ability to make Scotch Chrome exactly uh, as we would have made it a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we have to get some new, and we don't necessarily want to. Um, the team wants to have some time to, to start with the historical formula. Mm -hmm. And update it for a for our production realities, you know, for our for the, for the coder for the machines that we have installed. Um, also, to you know, if in some cases in some of the older films that were made, there's volatile chemistry that we can't use anymore. Sometimes there are direct replacements. Sometimes we have to synthesize something new. Uh, you know, essentially what Ivana has been working on is coming up with new sensitizers uh, that make the emulsion photo sensitive um, that, of course, are based on historic formulas. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and it's, it's really impossible to describe the nuances. They are slightly different, you know, uh, because he's not using the same equipment. He's not using the same uh, scale. You know, like right. when the Scotch Chrome formula, for example, was made to run on the coder that makes 30 million rolls a year, mm. you know, and that formula is slightly different than what we would need to make on our coder, which is, you know, a hundred times smaller. Mm. Uh, so yes, we're going to start from the old formulas. This compresses our research and development time drastically, but 
with each film that we release, it's going to be a new film. It's, it's going to be derived from an original formula. In the case of P30, it's derived almost directly. Wow. I mean, there's, there's very little difference between uh, the P30 that you'll buy from us and the P30 that was released uh, well into the 80s. Um, and, but with our color films, it's, it's kind of a different story. Um, more layers to coat, more complexity, uh, still the same machinery, still a small number of people. So slight adjustments are being made. Uh, also because I think the team uh, feels in some ways that um, they can do better than what sure. was done before. Yeah. yeah. You know, so starting from the old formula, it saves us a lot of time and, and money. Yeah. Uh, but improving on it is, is really the, the, the goal. Very cool. Um, Dave, this has been fun. Are we done? I don't Are know. We done? <laughs> I just put that out there. We've gone for an hour and a half, which is way longer than we wow. thought. Wow. I'm fine with it if people are, are, are still into it or if you're still into it or, or if there's anything we haven't addressed yet. Um, it doesn't seem like it's been an hour and a half. No, it doesn't. Well, Dave, hanging with you is fine. Wait, what can oh, I wait a second. It's a bit early. Can you say more about it? Oh, can we say more about how Ferrania works with various skin tones? Uh, That's a great question. Well, the black and white film uh, is panchromatic, so it responds to all wavelengths of light. Um, our color film, I know that there was a, a story that made the rounds. I think Petapixel published it and some other places about how color film was developed for white people. It was not right. developed as in, in the lab, but in, the, in, a, in its invention. Uh, it was made uh, based on white skin tones. And um, so I, I do know one thing. I don't know really much about how we're going to um, tweak the old Scotch Chrome formula to the, the new um, color reversal film that we're going to release this summer. Mm -hmm. But I do know that in our testing lab, which we lifted almost exactly as it is from the so there's a test room on one in one of the buildings and this test room has a gray chart. It has like the, the plastic uh, still life of fruit, you know, right, uh, right. and it's where they would go and shoot films to see their response. That was, the, that was kind, of, they're kind of like their lab for shooting. Yeah. And Frania uh, had, and we now have both a, a Caucasian and a black uh, mannequin. <laughs> for testing the skin tone. Yes, and so I, I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, most Ferrania films were tested and created with both skin tones in mind. Um, this is based strictly on the fact that th these things exist and that they had been there for a very, very long time uh, before we came around. But we've actually now just taken all that stuff and moved it into a room in, in our building. And uh, we'll we'll be doing the same kind of uh, of testing. Yeah. So um, we hope. So the P and P thirty stands for politically correct. Is that the? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's a weird discussion to have. Somebody they're, they're talking about it in the chat. I just saw too. It's weird. It it's completely valid. I mean, that story sure. really I struck a chord with me. Yeah. You know that I'm, I'm like you know I'm a white guy so it's hard for me to say much about it, but you know, the idea that, that all the color film that was produced, you know, in the 20th century was made to shoot white people is kind of weird. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it, it may it, not, it's, it's beyond not. that. I, I'm yeah, sure. Under, yeah. Asians uh, and Latinos are, are, um, will be represented. We will get mannequins for every nationality and female you know, and male. I think what we're going to try to do is just make a film that looks beautiful. I think that's a good statement. <laughs> that's it. Uh, we're going to test it a lot of different ways. Uh, we're probably going to do another alpha program where we invite people to share their results with us. Uh, uh, you know, we're, I, I think we've shown already and um, people follow us, follow our announcements on our website. 
follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter to varying degrees. Right. Some people really dig in and read every word that we post, uh, and and thus they have been able to understand over this long term exactly what's been going on. Uh, it is all on the record, basically, is the way I look at it. Sure. Uh, we plan to be nothing but open and 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 uh, and embrace the community in every possible way that we can. Um, I think. One of the key things that, if I'm speaking to a broad base of people, mm -hmm. uh, to understand is that we're tiny, and we can't do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. We just we can't. Um, if if one of our listeners out there is a, a billionaire who wants to step in, <laughs> operators are standing by. <laughs> who wants to step in and invest in the company? Uh, we are in a situation where throwing money at the problem would work to some degree. You know, we're not big fans of throwing money at problems. Uh, I've never been a fan of that. Um, I come from that, you know, uh, I remember Sam Raimi talking a long time ago about the evil dead and how, uh, when they made that movie, they had no budget and some of the most iconic, uh, shots in that movie were done because they had to figure out a solution that didn't cost anything. Yeah, sure. Uh, Necessity yeah. some other invention. Yeah. Now that said, we're a factory making a product that's extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, at CES, uh, someone from Kodak said the most complicated consumer product ever invented. I don't know. I think maybe the iPhone might be more complicated. I'm not sure, but um, it, it's very complicated, and there is a certain degree to which uh, money will solve uh, some of the speed problems, you know, mm -hmm. but we're also very cognizant of the fact that we can't grow too fast. <coughs> right. You know, we can't just take in a bunch of investment that has to be paid back in a short period of time because we need a chance to grow. Um, and so, yes, we're going to do all these things that we've been saying we're going to do. We're going to release a lot of different formats of film. A lot of different types of film, including we haven't really talked about it. C41 film, we're right. certainly going right. to produce in the future. Um, we want first do color reversal, uh, and then later we'll do some C41. Uh, we have some ideas for some kind of oddball formats that we would like to to produce in small volume. Uh, I think the the essential thing to keep in mind is we're trying to set up a, a long term solution mm -hmm. that can sort of underpin the industry as a whole. So if someone needs to buy base material, we can do that. If someone yeah, needs sure. to buy chemistry, they can do that. If someone wants to buy, um, send us a custom formula and we code it for them. We want to be able to do that. Well, that and makes you more valuable as a company too, because then you're able to support others that might be interested in doing something, but they don't have the resources for all the parts or all the materials yeah. or whatever that is. I think that's really cool. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know, we can see everybody else's competitors mm -hmm. or or potential partners, and we really prefer to see everyone as potential partners, yeah. because we think that the industry is has, you know, it's less than one percent of what it was in two thousand. No, oh, yeah, sure, it's and it's changed a lot. It's changed drastically, but the people who are still shooting film are not going anywhere. No, they're committed. <laughs> but, yeah. And in fact, coming back slightly, yeah. um, you know, everyone has been saying that the, that the industry has been increasing. I mean, Kodak announcing Ektachrome coming back is huge. It's big. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if there's anyone that can help sort of uh, push this myth out of the public consciousness that film is dead and gone, uh, it's Kodak. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're Kodak. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it'd be honestly, yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, we can't but you do know, that. Dave, one of the things, though, that and I think this is important for people watching this to understand too, because this is what's always drawn me to to Ferrani. I mean, one, we're friends, obviously, but you know, I had it's funny too. I had reached out to Ferrani, and then you got the email and sent it back to me. I had no idea you were working with Ferrani, and that was pretty cool. But 
what I really like about what you guys are doing, and I think this plays into this notion of being small, and I hate the word transparency because I think that's thrown around in a really kind of douchey way these days by a lot of people, but you guys offer a view into what you're doing on your website. You, you're reaching out and doing stuff like this where you can do a QA and a and a live broadcast to let people see into that process. It's totally different. Fuji would never do that. Kodak would never do that. Polaroid, well, there's nothing to see. Um, so I, I think that's a really interesting thing that you guys have on, on that as far as an angle goes. I mean, this is like, you can you can check out what we're doing and you can see how film is made and, and be a part of this. And this has been our stance from the start that, um, you know, sure, there are certain things about what we do that are mildly proprietary, okay? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's, but, of course, yeah. Yeah, but you have to have a factory to, to do it. And yeah. Kodak doesn't want to make our stuff. Fuji doesn't want to make our stuff. They make their own stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's, we really don't have much to hide, you know. We don't need to, to be a monolith of, of, you know, just here's our product, take it, you know. Uh, we want to involve people in what we do. And engage people and and you know i could probably rattle off 15 buzzwords but mm -hmm. you know it, it's really it's about um you know the idea that we don't exist without the film community right and what we're doing is pointless without the film community and that's speaking not just of the people online who share their film photos but the larger industry as a whole Mm -hmm. uh, everybody making film. Burger just announced some new film. Awesome. We love it. Uh, Kodak announces film. We love it. Uh, everybody, uh, Adax just announced that they're expanding uh, their facilities. We love it. You know, we're, we're not here to, oh, someone asked if, if you know, what film uh, does P30 replace? It doesn't. We're not here to replace anything. We're not here to displace anything. Right, right. We're here to to show uh, in a very real way that the community matters, that we know that they matter, and we want to involve them in our process. And if that means that we work with other companies, awesome. If that means that uh, we simply just make our own products and, and go about things our own way, that, that's great too, as long as everyone is along for the ride and you know things like this help a lot uh we're going to try to open a youtube channel of our own and start broadcasting a little bit more video and a little less text uh because <laughs> we know that we know that the text is is sometimes a little dense and and maybe not uh you don't have time to read it um but you know we have been very open we think so far and we only want to continue that. Um, it, it's inherent to, to my philosophy, and it's what brought Nicole and I together in the first place, was this shared idea right, that right. to sell film today, to people today, you have to be different than mm -hmm. the way it's been in the last century. Uh, and we both are kind of gregarious and open people, maybe a little too much so sometimes. Um, who, and we feel like we have nothing to hide. So uh, we're, we're, we're doing what we're doing. We're hopefully bringing everyone along for the ride. And um, we just, like I said earlier, I think it's important that everyone understands that we can't be all things to all people immediately. No. <laughs> well, and, and, well, and there's some of the questions about pack film, about whatever. I mean, sure, anything's possible. You, you got to get there, though. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, some, some people are asking about 220. Some people are asking about uh, instant film, um, uh, pack film. You know, I think the biggest issue with pack film is the machinery. That yeah, you that's not to, what you're set up for. It, it's not making the chemistry. It's not making the sheets, mm -hmm. you know, the positive and the negative sheet. Uh, it, it really is about the machine that assembles it into a pack. Right. And to build that new machine, uh, you know, I don't know if it's feasible for us in the short term, 
uh, you know, I know that there's a, a, a crew of people uh, led by Doc and uh, formerly of Impossible in Vienna who are, who are trying to come up with some solution for, for pack film. If we can contribute to that process, by all means, we want to. Uh, we have more immediate concerns of making enough P30 film. <laughs> so yeah, that we, sure, sure. Uh, so that we can sell it to the people who want it today uh, and figuring First out how to make first. Yeah. back in paper and, and figuring out how to install the equipment that we already have. Um, <laughs> Dave, there's an interesting question. 220, are we shave Dave's beard? Isn't that oh, funny? <laughs> uh, okay, so 220. Here's, here's the deal with 220. Once we figure out the issue with the backing paper for 120, uh, our machine that we have to install uh, can make 220 and 120. However, the, there are a couple of parts that you have to add to the machine to switch it from making 120 to 220. Mm -hmm. Those parts did not make the transition. So we would have to commission those, we have blueprints for those parts, but we don't have the actual parts. So we would have to make those parts. Um, the expense of installing the 120 machine and then making these new parts is manageable, but not immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, uh, I, I said on APUG um, about 127, about 126, about 220, we have the machinery to make these things. Mm -hmm. um, they're the issue with the backing paper that we need to solve, which we're already working on. However, I think the remainder of this year is really going to be spent focused on the four primary formats and four by five, because we can make four by five in house. We know this already. It actually might, you know, come out sooner than later. Mm -hmm. um, 2018 will be the year of the oddball formats. <laughs> in, you know, in, in 2018, next year, we're fairly certain at this point in time. I mean, you're going to make 618 and uh... it, it's February 2017. <laughs> so it, it, it's hard. I'm not, you know, psychic. Uh, My Agfa Pioneer, I need film for. I've never been able to find that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We have someone asking for, um, uh, oh, I can't even remember now. We've had every every oddball format. I'm sure, yeah. uh, And many of them we can make. But mm -hmm. we have to hook up the machines. We have to put that organ in the body uh, yeah. of, of the building. And to do that, we need time. We need extra people. We need money. Mm -hmm. And those things will come with time. And so I, I really think that in 2018, what you're going to see is we've firmly established the coding. We've released color in black and white. We're cranking that stuff out as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. 2018 is going to be the year that we expand. We're going to take the pieces from Big Boy that we saved and try to grow the, the drying tunnel so we can make more each day. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to add the machinery so that we can finish the film ourselves. From So we start with raw materials. We end with boxes that we can put on pallets and ship out. Uh, this includes the 35 millimeter machines, 120 slash 220, 127, 126. The four by five machine already works. Uh, and most of the cinema machines already work because, um, you know, they're a lot simpler. Super 8 poses a little bit of more of a tricky uh, issue. We're probably going to work with a partner uh, for a while until we can figure out um, how to build a new molding machine or something. I mean, there's a lot to figure out with Super 8, but there are already people out there who have cartridges, who do the finishing, and who we've been talking to for, you know, two years uh, about uh, how to make uh, Super 8. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done this year just to kind of get the basics down. Mm -hmm. Next year, we get to move into new territory you know, and reintroduce some products that people haven't seen in a while, like sure. 126, for example, which is just 35 millimeter film, but it's in a cartridge. Yeah, with no so sprockets, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to spool it yourself. Yeah. You just slap it in the back. And, and, you know, if I were to 
guess, I would bet 75% of the American population has one of those little brick Kodak Instamatic cameras sitting in their house somewhere or their neighbor's house or their grandmother's house or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because Kodak made millions and millions of them and people love to buy them at flea markets and put them on a shelf because they're, they're cool looking, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And most of those cameras are so simple that they still work. Yeah. It's not like, uh, well, even like Rolleiflex where you got to have a CLA and, and you know, it, yeah. it's possible they're frozen. Dave, yeah. there's an interesting question that Ann sent a minute ago. Um, I don't know if this person's still in here, but as a, I, think it's, I think it's pertinent to the, what we're talking about with this industry, though, and somebody who's a, uh, studying chemical engineering as a student. I see uh, this. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for getting involved in this? You and I talked about this in New York, and this is, I think, a major threat if there is any to film is the guys who know how to do it aren't getting younger. They want to retire and there's nobody that they're not teaching how to make film in school. And so to have really that master of craft, you know, talk a little bit about that. Cause I think that's interesting. This is literally one of the biggest problems the industry as a whole faces. Yeah, not just for Anya, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, you can write any number of formulas on paper and put them on the internet and even have the machines. Mm -hmm. But you have to have people that know how to use those machines and that know how to translate those formulas into products, you know. Yeah. And the number of those people is getting smaller. It's not getting bigger. Um, we're not going to be able to turn that around ourselves. Um, you know, we definitely have more people from the former operation that we would like to hire back. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we think it's critical. And we, I know that uh, Marco especially is, is very, Marco is, a, he's the genius that really drives the engine that's gotten us where we have, have where we are today. Uh, he's also a, a restorationist and a preservationist. Hmm. And he's worked with the Italian National Cinema Archive uh, and other archives to restore ancient uh, films that were shot on nitrate and other like volatile stuff, stuff that was considered unrecoverable, he's been able to, to restore. Um, the educational part is super critical to him. Uh, it's certainly very critical to our own team, you know, who want help. <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're not gonna keep it at six people forever. Uh, we need to grow our team. We can't grow it too fast. We have to grow it in corresponding to our sales. But uh, we definitely have a need to bring in new blood. Yeah, it's There's kind a, of a, a catch-22. You can't just throw an ad on Craigslist saying, you know, now hiring C41 specialists to uh, film. <laughs> and here's, the, here's the big thing. Um, okay, let's say you're an American and you've just come out of school as a chemical engineer and you love film. Um, the next question is, are you ready to move to the middle of nowhere, Italy? <laughs> uh, because our factory is in a valley uh, in a national park. And it's- You might be surprised though. I mean, if you people uh, want to do it, you know. The nearest, the nearest city of any size is Savona, uh, which is about a half hour, 40 minutes away, depending on traffic. Uh, the, the city that uh, Frania lives in is called Cara Montenote, and it's a tiny little town. Uh, I, when I came through the, one of the last tunnels before we entered Cara Montenote on my trip there, I looked around and I, I told Nico, I said, this looks like my home state of West Virginia. <laughs> you know, the, the, the rolling hills, the foliage, the small town vibe, it, it looked like what I grew up in. In, in small town West Virginia. So it's not just, you know, do you want to make film, but do you want to make film for Ferrania? Uh, right. Because to do that, you would need to move uh, to Italy. You'd probably need to learn some Italian because uh, our team speaks varying degrees of, of English. And, um, and if, the, if the answer to those questions is yes, then I, we certainly want to hear from you um, because whether it's a sort of a master apprentice kind of situation 
uh, or just a straight up employment situation, we know that we need to train up a new generation of people who can, I mean, if, if, if we're true to our word, 100 more years of analog film. That's past my lifespan. That's past Nikola's lifespan. That's past the lifespan of everybody that works for us today. Yeah. So we need new people. And yeah, those exactly. people need to make new people. Uh, and, you know, so I think once we have the bandwidth, you know, internally uh, with in terms of our staff, once Marco can perhaps take a bit of a step back from the day to day and and look more to the long term, uh, I think one of the first things we would like to do is approach a, a local university in Italy about creating a, a program working with us specifically. Yeah, I think you'd have to. Yeah, that, yeah. that actually would be interesting. I mean, this is what we'd like to do. I mean, we don't yeah. know how feasible it is. We don't really have much of a clue about even how we'd go about it, but it's something that we've thought about and that we've actually you, you talked have about. You have to do it on that level, though, Dave, because it's, it, I mean, it, it really is that specific. It's not like you just like kind of like dabble in film manufacturing and then you go, you, you kind of have to have some major training to do that. I mean, it's, yeah, it, you'd have to I have mean, it at the university level. I think. If you have uh, extensive organic chemistry uh, knowledge, that goes a long way. Yeah. Um, I but, don't, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Ivano, who is uh, the one working on our sensitizers, he's an organic chemist by training, by schooling. That's his, However, yeah. he started working at Ferrania when he was 18 in wow. the mid 60s. Uh, so that's awesome. You know, yeah. So he brings a lot to the table in terms of just experience. And so it's it's knowledge. is super important as a basis mm -hmm. experience you, you can only get over time and you know so we think that this idea of a master apprentice kind of relationship uh, is the best approach to take initially um, if we have people who are eager to move to rural Italy uh, to help us uh, make film I bet uh, you have a nice beach nearby though yeah we're we're about uh, the factory is, according to Google Maps, I looked this up. I'm trying to remember the exact, I think it's an hour and 20 minutes from Nice. Oh, wow. That's not bad. And this only, isn't as middle of nowhere as you're making it out to be. I mean. Well, it, it's kind of hard to get to. Um, sure. In fact, one of the big things that the government is doing uh, on the former campus is putting a new road that connects two major arteries. Oh, okay, gotcha. That, that kind of weren't previously connected to make it sort of easier to, to get around. Yeah, uh, and if you take the road out of Cairo Montanote and go south, I think it's about fifteen or twenty kilometers to mm -hmm. the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. which, you know, so also not bad at all. Yeah, um, but it's in a part of the the country that's that's mostly industrial, not a lot of residential, not a lot of commercial. So yeah. it's a lot of little small factory towns that support a specific industry. There's mining. There's uh, the so, nightlife might be a little on the quiet side, huh? Most certainly, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would need to go to Savona uh, or you know take the train to Milan, which is a couple of hours away, uh, to 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 get that kind of thing. I mean, Nicola, bless his heart, <laughs> lives in Florence, which mm -hmm. is three hours away. Wow! And, and he commutes. And he commutes. Holy cow! Now, he doesn't Does he stay there during the week, or. He doesn't need to be there every day. Yeah. Uh, we do have a bed and breakfast where we are regulars. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, it's you a, amazing. I had some of the most amazing food at this place. Uh, I really need to go and figure them out what they were called and leave a Yelp review because. <laughs> but um, uh, accommodations are not widespread in Cairo Montanoti. There's basically just a couple of places to stay. Uh, so Nicola goes and, you know, it depends on how late he works, if he drives back or not. Uh, but, uh, yes, he makes that commute more often. He's already worn out one car. Let's wow. Just that way. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. A three-hour drive. That's like me going had to Austin to, to yeah, work. Had, had to buy a new, a new car uh, yeah. a while back. Marco <coughs> um, tends to go 
for days at a time and stays at the bed and breakfast, you know, okay. so that he, he doesn't have to commute back and forth. Uh, but Marco has, uh, you know, a, a lab in Florence that he also, he has a partner that mm -hmm. does most of the work, but um, he has to commute back and forth as well. You know, so commuting is, you know, a possibility, but most of our factory team live in Caramontanote or Savona so that they don't have to commute that far. Um, so moving there, yes, we want people who have studied organic chemistry, who have a passion for film, to get in touch with us because we need we need new people. And, yeah. you know, it, it might be a while before we can open a position for, for such people. Um, you know, there are kind of restrictions right now because we're a, an official governmental approved manufacturer. There's some restrictions about who can get in, what parts of the building, at what time of day, and that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, it's just some paperwork to fill out to be able to get somebody access to work with the team. And um, it, it, right now it's a matter of, you know, one thing at a time. <laughs> let's make some yeah, yeah, film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and let's constantly be hoping to hear from people who are proactive about wanting to work for us, but eventually we'll probably try to start a program of our own to generate some new jobs. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, we, we talked about that in New York a little bit, but I mean, I don't think people realize that is the, that is probably the single biggest threat to photography, or the film industry anyway. Because everybody's going to deal with this. Kodak's going to be in a similar boat. Fuji's going to be in a similar boat. If they want to keep making this stuff, 50 years, it, it could be slim pickings, you know? <laughs> Less than that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, it's red alert. It's You feel like the Catholic Church. Nobody wants to be a priest. Who wants to be a chemical engineer, you know? But um, people are asking, too, what, what is the best way to reach you if they're into chemistry and they want to get in touch? The best way to reach us, honestly, is through the contact form on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes that to you. Can, it goes to me and Nicola both. And then you can reroute it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, depending on the volume on any given day, we can't respond sometimes immediately, but we do eventually respond to almost everything that, that comes into our inbox. Um, that's honestly the best way right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, eventually we'll probably have some sort of more official um, page on our site, you know, that lists, here's what we need in turn, like a job board. Yeah, practically, sure. you know, here's what uh, we're looking for, yeah. This is the kind of knowledge that that we need to add to our knowledge base, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the best way to contact us is always through our, our site. Um, people also can contact us on Twitter, Facebook, and those kind of places, but contacting us through the contact form is the most direct route. There you go. Um, and what is have, the what is the URL on the website? When we're done, uh, I'll repost this whole video if people want to watch. We I'll are it again, but what is the URL? It's, it's film, filmfrania.it. Okay. Um, super simple. Filmfrania.it. It looks like we already have uh, some volunteers. <laughs> I love it. It's so awesome. Love uh, it. And yes, this conversation will be available to watch later. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't have, I don't know if it posts immediately. I haven't done one of these since we last talked, but it does repost into the into the channel. Someone asked uh, another very good question. This was 15 minutes ago. Are we going to be able to meet demand? Uh, this is, uh, of course, a, a big question that the team has been working on because until we launched our this kind of Kickstarter exchange program survey thing on February 1st. Uh, you know, we knew we needed to make a certain number of films for Kickstarter backers, mm -hmm. uh, but we didn't have as, as we had estimations about demand, but we didn't have facts, you know, uh, and we like to operate on facts. We're not into alternative facts or any of that other kind of stuff. Right. Um, so facts are uh, coming in as we speak, we, we still have a couple more days left before we close the exchange form. Uh, we've received tons of uh, requests from resellers um, and we're gonna put up uh, a little kind of 
a way that we can contact resellers and they can basically kind of give us a clue of about how much film they would buy in six months or a year. Uh, and this gives us uh, kind of a big number that we need to try to meet, to meet demand. Um, in the first few weeks of the rollout, we're going to be chasing our tail. That's for sure. Sure. Um, we're going to be cranking it out as fast as we can, and it's going to be basically going out the door as fast as we can make it. Um, we are pretty certain after uh, this past week of, of talks at the factory that we have a handle on the situation and that the um, ramp up to making enough film to meet demand um, shouldn't, we've bit, we figured out how to kind of compress it, but we think it's going to be about a month before, after we launch the store until we're able to really get to a point where we're ahead of the, we're making film fast enough that we're ahead of the sales. Right, right, right. That's the challenge. Yeah. Um, so yes, we will be able to meet demand. Uh, it, you know, people are going to have to bear with us for a few weeks and we're going to make this extremely clear when we launch the shop. And like I said earlier, uh, and it bears repeating, um, it's, you know, the only fair way to do it is first come first serve. So, yeah, so Kickstarter first and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it's, um, it, yes, we can, we can meet demand, uh, but it's going to be tough for uh, at least a few weeks. Um, and then that should ease up really quickly. Please reiterate the thing. Oh yes. Um, the, the Kickstarter backers, you know, not everyone has, has seen the email that we sent on February 1st. Uh, we had a few bounced emails of people's whose email addresses aren't good. Any, I mean, it's been two years, so yeah, it's been a while. You know, we're still trying to chase down every last backer and make sure that they can make a choice. To so if either. somebody's watching this and they haven't gotten an email from you, they might want to get in touch, correct? Yes. Help at filmfrania.it. Help. Go. Help at filmfrania.it. That's the address uh, for anyone who has a, uh, an issue uh, finding their Kickstarter uh, emails. Um, so anyway, the... We, of the you know 5,582 backers that Kickstarter shows on the website, um, you know some of those didn't back us for film. They only wanted a postcard or just gave us a donation. Um, I think we send out close to 5,000 emails to film backers. Wow. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what the statistic is right this moment, but the last time I looked at the responses to our type form, we were at about 55% of people had responded to the form that we put together. Hmm. Um, we still have people email us every day. I can't find it, whatever. We put together a little page on our site that has an FAQ about that. If you go to the P30, just filmfrontyit slash P30, you can read about P30. You can also see the FAQ for, for backers who are having problems. Um, we're trying to chase down every backer and make sure that they can make the choice. Do they want some P30 now? Or do they want to keep their original reward and say, and, and buy some uh, P30 at a discount? Right. Uh, and every backer who keeps their reward will get the color reversal film that we promised originally. Mm -hmm. that's, that's certain. Um, we are past the point of no return. We are past the point of failure. You know, it's it. Uh, here's the here's the perfect. There's a guy who works in the factory. His name is Giuseppe, but everyone calls him Beppe. Beppe is. Uh, while I was there, he he struck me as a very quiet person. You know, mm -hmm. very contemplative and but very observant. And. The day after they coded the first batch of film, they were looking at a sample of it, and everyone was uh, speaking in Italian, so I couldn't follow it entirely. But there was a lot of gesticulating. I mean, 
and some raised voices. <laughs> uh, and and Beppe just sat there kind of quietly the whole time. And then he just he kind of like just put up a finger and 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 uh, spoke and silenced the room. Hmm. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I gotta ask. What did Beppe just say? And Nico looks over at me. And he's like, he, Beppe just said, can we take a moment and just let the fact sink in that we're no longer arguing about how to get the machines working, but how to fix the film. That's cool. It was, it was really like, it was a kind of a huge moment because every argument that they'd had up to that point in time, every debate, every meeting had been about how to get the machines working. Yeah. But you're past and that, yeah. We're past that, yes. Yeah, and and it's, now, it's now about making film. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's going to take some time, of course. We, we, like I said before, we can't do everything all at once unless we have Mr. Billion Dollars uh, fall from the sky <laughs> and be like, I love film. Uh, let me help you out. <laughs> uh, what millionaire doesn't love film, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, the, 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 the biggest, the, all the problems, the, the biggest delays are behind us. Uh, any delays that happen now are going to be days. I want to see you guys go on Shark Tank. That would be, you'd kill uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> they, no, no, we would just get blank, blank looks. <laughs> Kevin wouldn't be impressed. Hey, he's in Dallas. Well, I could, you know, find him. You mean, you mean like film for cameras? <laughs> uh, Cuban might like your style, you know. Maybe, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think Shark Tank is our our best. <laughs> it's not your scene for, for an investment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, every Kickstarter backer will get their film. Uh, we're not doing another Kickstarter. That's it. It's, first of all, you know, me personally, I, I don't like to go back to the well. No, 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 right. You know, uh, I I think people already very generously gave us some money. And that money was put to very, very good use uh, to salvage equipment that is going to define our future, you know. And, and in fact, if we hadn't been able to purchase that equipment when we did, we may have given up on this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Because some of that equipment uh, is necessary uh, in order to grow the, the little coder into something bigger. And... Um, so we're not going to go back to our backers and ask for more money. Um, what we're going to do is deliver the product that we originally promised. And even if it takes us a little bit extra time to generate the money we need to install all this machinery, uh, so be it. You know, uh, slow growth for us is is the better plan. Yeah. Than than quick growth because if you grow quickly, you can grow too big, too fast, and then there's no backing down. Yeah, and, yeah. and in order for film to remain viable, the manufacturing basis for film has to be small and has, mm -hmm. to, has to remain uh, uh, feasible. So, we, yeah, we don't want to grow too fast. We don't want to hire too many people. We, don't, we want to do everything uh, very much based on the demand. As there's more demand, we'll invest in scaling up. Uh, as it becomes more critical that we create 120 and Super 8 and 16 millimeter, we'll invest in that equipment. All right. For now, uh, we're going to make some P30. We're going to try our best to keep up with everyone's uh, uh, demand for it, uh, and then we'll and we'll, we're going to communicate with everyone very openly all along. You know, this I like is. It. This is the way we think it works for us. And, and we hope that this is the way that it works for everybody else as well. Um, oh, I have no doubt. I mean, I think it's going to work. Just to kind of recap, because we've gone over two hours now. <laughs> it's a bit, well, probably about two hours because we had technical difficulties starting. So where Faranya is right now is that um, up and running, the P30 is going to be the black and white film it's panchromatic ISO of 80, and this will be coming very soon. Yes. Um, followed by the color reversal, and this will all be in 35 millimeter for now. 
expand as growth allows coming down the pike. And that's well, kind of what 2017 looks like, I suppose. When, when we're uh, ready to put out color reversal, uh, we owe our Kickstarter backers four formats. Yes. Oh, okay, 35, right, yeah. 35, 120, Super 8, and 16 millimeter. Uh, okay. Those last two in Cine. Um, so we will have those problems nailed down by that time. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in there, if we have the bandwidth with our staff, uh, if we have the money, um, if we've solved the 120 backing paper problem earlier than we expect, then we will. We want to put out P30 and 120 as well, mm -hmm. um, and we will eventually. Uh, sure, sure. It might come sooner. It might come later. We're just not sure. Um, and like I said, we will probably do at least one small batch of four by five. Um, I think the most interesting thing of all the stuff we've said today is kind of like what we were headed at. It's like it's nice to be in a position for you guys right now where it's not, you know, if it could be done. It's like just, you know, we can do anything, but we can't do everything with the scale. And so that's a much better place to be than than where you were two years ago, where it's like we want to see if we can do this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago when we awesome. spoke, everything was pure speculation. Yeah, and and granted, there's still a lot of things that we we speculate about, but uh, we have a we have our footing now. No. You know, we have a grounding. We've produced photographic film, yeah, and sent it out, and people shot it, sure, and got some pretty good results. We think uh, so. You know, the, the next steps we're going to take together with the community, uh, and and beyond, you know, we plan to drag the community along with us the whole way. Uh, because, you know, like I said, we think that it, the community can really help us extend our capabilities, you know, with a tiny team, a tiny coder, a tiny building relative to other film factories. Uh, we need to, we need partners, you know, yeah. and if, if uh, other companies want to partner with us, great. If our, uh, if our, if the community wants to partner with us in, in some way, great. If they just want to be customers, great. I mean, it, it, it all works for us. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, I think what we want to do is just do more of this, which is take questions, answer questions, uh, be as open as we can. We do encourage everyone who asks questions to read what we've already published on our site because there's a lot there. Yeah. If you just go back through our news feed over the past two years, there's a an enormous amount of technical detail that we've described. Um, that there's a lot of, uh, you know, well, what happened here or what happened there that we've already talked about, and it's not that we don't necessarily want to talk about it again, but it is all there for the record. And uh, if you have an afternoon and a cup of tea. Uh, on your iPad, you know, you put it in read mode and you can read all about yeah. a lot of stuff that we've done. Uh, and we're going to continue to share, uh, to overshare a, a lot of what we're doing uh, because, yeah, we think this is important. You know, we, yeah. we think that uh, getting feedback from, from people is important. And we think that everyone knowing what we're doing is important. Also, just because I just saw in the chat, um, my buddy Dave asked a question, and and just to reiterate, and and I know we've been talking for a while, and some people probably have not seen the whole two hours. Uh, the alpha program that is going to be part of P thirty is yes. a way for people to basically to participate in this. Um, when you buy P thirty film, um, you are encouraged to go out and test it in different developers, do your thing, try to do. It, break it, whatever, just be experimental and then share well, your results of what you're getting. And that's what the alpha program is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that we're encouraging people to try to break it. We're right. encouraging people to, to follow our best practices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and share the results and share the results. Um, but if you want to go off sheet, you know, off book, <laughs> uh, and you're willing to share that information with our factory team, and this information is helpful, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, you've scratched our back, so we will scratch yours. You know, this is, we're still kind of hammering out the details of this and the mechanism by which we'll uh, have people communicate with the factory 
Mm-hmm. Um, but all this should be ready by the time we launch the shop or soon thereafter. And so the P30 film, the alpha film, it, it will stand on its own. It's not experimental, so to speak. It's just that it hasn't been tested in every possible permutation. Well, every you possible don't have camera. the bandwidth to do that, right? Yeah. No, no and, and we don't want to take four more months uh, to right. do that internally uh if people are are willing to 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 buy it and use it to our recommendations we're sure it's going to be pretty gorgeous i can't wait i think it's exciting so if people want to buy it and break it great please do that but please share with us and what we'll do is we'll cut you a coupon to to either get another roll or or something you know it um it the alpha program is I mean, look, I, I used Gmail for three years in beta. I never had any problems. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. But if I did have problems, I had a line of communication to Google yeah. about, my, about the problems that I had. And so this is a very similar situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, P30 is going to be very usable if you follow our best practices guide. Uh, and if you don't, that's your choice, uh, and we hope that you share your results with us so that we can see. And the other questions were, were availability that we addressed earlier, and, and soon. You don't so, have the exact date yet, but it'll be in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah we're going to launch the shop towards the end of the month. It'll be, yeah, you can, okay, and that's the other question. It will be available to buy through you directly from Ferrania.it. Yes. From okay. Uh, before anything else, yes. It's, like I said, we, we talked about this earlier in the broadcast, but we can mention it again. You know, resellers uh, around the world have been contacting us, and we certainly want to put the film in shops, uh, but not until we're able to cover the direct. I, and you, ha- you have a ma- an email list, right? Yes. So I, I, I think if I were to advise somebody, if they're interested in buying for your film, that you probably want to go get on the email list because it will be first come, first serve. And I would want to know about it kind of like immediately as soon as it's coming out. Sure. Personally. Yeah, we're going to make the announcement uh, across all of our channels, um, email, on our site, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, all pretty much at the same time. Uh, however, Everyone that's on our newsletter list, uh, who, especially if you were a Kickstarter backer and you've chosen to become a friend of film, uh, you know, will eventually be using our newsletter first Mm -hmm. because, you know, we need to, uh, for people who have taken the time to come to our website and sign up for our newsletter, we deserve them to give them just a little bit of a head start. Sure. That's the way. That's kind of the way we we look at it. Um, initially, the shop will be launched everywhere all at the same time. Uh, but being on our newsletter is, of course, the best way to know about what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's on the homepage of our website. You just scroll down a little bit, and there's a sign up box. It's super simple. Awesome, groovy deal, Dave. I think we've covered everything kind of twice. Good, here. good, uh, man. No, this has been fun. I, I really fun. enjoyed. I, I always enjoy having you on because two two hours and and change minus minus the technical difficulties. Uh, yeah. Ten minutes, twenty minutes. Wow. Yeah, I I got to figure out what the problem was. So apparently you can you can schedule a live broadcast, but then we couldn't get the the chat. I mean, sorry, the the Google Hangout to work. So yeah. Uh, special thanks to everybody. Sorry, I just pulled up the chat. Special thanks to everybody who's been in here. And also, you guys don't know, but I want to thank Anne, too, who's been behind the scenes. And when you do a live broadcast, it's really hard to read and keep up with the chat. And so she's kind of done that and been our moderator and uh, waited till we had enough light questions to ask us things. And so Anne's awesome. So everybody in the chat say thank you, Anne, and tell us she's awesome and she rules and all this stuff. Plus, I can see what the delay is. <laughs> so, no, she's been great and so have you she is awesome it's been fun and, yeah. and uh she's been a, a a key part of the team uh since the beginning so that's right uh, she's part of the team too yeah 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 um yeah our team is shown on the homepage of our website we're all proud uh of Here that a a we can show our whole team in a very short slideshow 
<laughs> because yeah. there's only uh, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of us. Uh, you know, but yeah, we, we plan to make sure that the team is always front and center because, um, you know, everybody that's doing this is doing this out of passion, you know, and, and out of, yeah. Well, and, and I think it's also, um, worth noting here and you would never say it, but I will, um, is that what people don't understand is, is making film is, it's hard. There are obstacles, financial, practical, chemical, anything. And I, I, I know just in through talking to you, I think the easiest way to say this is, yeah, this is clearly because you guys love it. Um, you really wanted to make film. Yeah. So yeah, you've had to earn it and you're still having to earn it, but I think you're doing a great job. So thanks Ted. Yeah, absolutely. And anything else I can help you guys with just, you know, we'll talk offline, but keep you posted because, uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to help wherever I can. I can't believe we still have 336 people that are like sitting here for more than two hours watching to us talk about stuff, you know. So I, I'm stoked. Uh, that yeah. that's great. And thank, thanks to everybody who's who's been watching. Uh, you know, I, I I can't say often enough uh, how important that the community is to us. Uh, and you know, it might seem at times like we're aloof. Uh, or, or whatever, but this is not the case. Uh, you can contact us uh, through any number of means. It might take us some time to get back to you on some occasions because we are very few people, but uh, we try to respond directly to almost every single person who posts, who asks us a question or, or has an issue. Um, and um, we're gonna continue to do that. That's, it, it's our, our commitment for the, the long term is that the community is is critical to to where we are today and where we're going to be in the future yes. and uh we want to do everything we can to to make products that the community wants and and loves um within <laughs> the constraints that uh, we've been spending the last two hours talking about. <laughs> yeah, I would say that that's also, though, I think uh, one of the selling points why I find for Anya interesting is that you guys do peel back that curtain and you talk about that process. And and I mean, I love Ilford too, but they, they're they in a different place, but they don't do that. Kodak doesn't do that. Um, Burger doesn't do that. Fuji doesn't do that. But you guys do. You can see what the machines look like. You can see what the facilities look like. You can hear yeah. the backstory. I, I think that's cool. A certain kind of person might consider uh, – this to be completely unprofessional disagree yeah to like sit and talk to you for two hours on youtube about about our factory business you know that could not disagree uh, more no uh, yeah i know but, what you uh, mean yeah nicola and i have never thought this way and this is really how we came together uh on a kind of a spiritual level uh was that we both had this same disdain mm -hmm. for the uh the silence uh, uh, of, uh, that we get from businesses, not just film businesses, but a lot of businesses. Yeah. Um, it, it's like they, they live in their tower and they put out their product and you accept it or you don't. Uh, we of course open ourselves up for a lot of issues when we communicate so openly to the public, we step on our own tongue every now and then. We say things one day that change, and then we have to say them a different way. Uh, but that you know, day, that's where the strength later. of that relationship comes in. I mean, any company could have that, and it's about updating yeah. that to be a modern uh, level of communication yeah. with people. Yeah, and, and we, like I said earlier, you know, we, we feel like we don't have anything to hide. Uh, and if we have to correct ourselves from time to time, uh, so be it. As long as everyone understands that this is an ongoing thing, yeah. and it's, it's not static, uh, we're not stopping at one product. We're not, you know, we're not, uh, uh, even after that one product is out in the world, we're not stopping the development of that product into the future. You know, it's, right, right. it's a, it's a, a rolling thing. And we're, we're trying to do as much as we can to communicate this to people as it rolls along. So and I think that's uh, okay. I mean, the last time you and I spoke, we, we were talking about the initial Kickstarter and why the decision was made to color reversal and not black and white. And, yeah. and here Although you we did mention, we did mention P30 
even way back then. Well, what's interesting though is I think logistically, I think you guys were able, be, probably because of your size, to realize that there was an opportunity with P30, and you were able to turn to meet that. And look at the excitement that it's gotten so far. I mean, I, I've heard nothing but excitement over P30. You know, you know, look, if, if we had uh, coded the P30, and we were like, ah, it looks like something else. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like Triax, or it looks like uh, sure, you sure. Know, some other kind of film then we probably would have just ignored it and proceeded to the next step yeah. in, in the testing phase for color. But we loved it. Like we really loved the, the results. Yeah. And we, we thought that the film was unique enough to kind of stand on its own. And, uh, you know, that remains to be seen, of course, but uh, we felt that it was worth putting out there uh, to see what people think about it. No, I think it's and, an amazing idea. Yeah. And so far, Action has been uh, overwhelmingly good. I also like the fact that it's an old film that, that you've brought back because there's a story there to tell, you know? Yeah, I mean, the whole, like, I mean, Fellini shot eight and a half on, on this film. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just one of many Italian classics that were shot on this stock. And it's the same stuff, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't know if there's another black and white cinema film on the market for still photographers. I'm not. I don't think I don't so. Know, I don't think so either. I, I'm not. I don't want to say we're unique in that respect, but yeah, but not that uh, I, I know don't. Of, I, mean. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. there's another one. Yeah. Um, if there is, uh, I apologize. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so silly. But yeah, uh, the you know th this. Cinema kind of history is also very important to this, to the, to our founders, to, to our company, to our future plans. You know, we decided a long time ago that you can't make just one kind of film. You have to make it all mm -hmm. uh, because the market is just too small yeah. to, to yeah. support uh, uh, this kind of specialization if you're a factory. You know? right, 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 and, right. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> No, that makes sense. I feel like I'm just rambling now. We've no, no, we're talking we're, well, a really long time. Uh, it's time. It's time for a break. All right, Dave. Thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate this. Was, this was a fun thing to do today. So, and and thank you. And uh, yes, yeah, thank you, good. Thanks everybody for watching. Did she say thanks? Yeah, she did. And and thanks to everyone who's watched and and will watch because this yeah, will be. Uh, I don't know how fast watch. this goes back into the channel, but I think it it'll be up today. I mean, you know. Cool. So, soon. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all later. Ciao.